before we start, I think it is good to actually use the whiteboard to motivate some of the very basic concepts that we'll need to then send things into space and to understand orbits. So let's go back to the whiteboard. And we're back and I think we are ready to look at projectiles first in the flat earth approximation. This is going to be our projectile. And if it goes well, you will see it doing some sort of parabolic orbit. It will not be done by my hand. It will just be driven by gravity. And I will try to send it so there is no vertical velocity along here. And then we'll try to draw the orbit. You ready for it? So it did fall. So what we just witnessed was essentially something and I'm going to do the axis this way so that they match the throw. And I send it from this initial height. It was around here anyway. And the projectile did an orbit that looked something like this. The range was somewhere there. You can't really see it, uh, but we can call this R. This is essentially the range and at the start the initial vertical velocity was zero and I sent it with some horizontal velocity which I guess if I go to the video and I measure this I will know exactly how much it was. Now obviously when you have something like this and if you remember physics 101 or 102 we can have a look at how the height. So let's call the height that the particle has at any given moment Ts. This is going to be given by the initial position S0 plus the vertical velocity at instant 0 times T minus 1.5 G T squared. And what this very simply allows you to do is if just as I did the original velocity at zero is zero. And if we actually want to determine essentially the time it took for the projectile or the orange or whatever you call that in English to reach zero, you can set S to zero, which allows you to solve the simple equation, which is a function of S zero minus one and a half G T squared and therefore one and a half g t squared is equal to s0 and the time that it took to get there simply given by the square root of the initial position two times because you flip it divided by g and in the same way of thinking as we'll see on the slides this range is very easily calculated because the horizontal velocity is not really being changed. It is constant. And therefore, the range is very simply given by the original horizontal velocity times this time to get to zero, which in this case is square root of 2 s0 over g. Oh, it's back. And Let's consider the limitations of what we've just derived. In principle, if we throw a projectile, we can always calculate essentially how long it will keep going until it hits the ground. It is a function of how high you throw it and essentially how strong gravity is and this assumption that you're not throwing it down nor up. And this means that because the projectile is going to be moving for this amount of time, it will get to this range. In other words, it will matter what is the initial height you're throwing it from and also how quick you're actually throwing it. If you're really good at throwing oranges, the range is going to be very large. If you're not so good, the range is gonna be small. Now consider that you're really, really good at throwing oranges and you keep throwing them faster and faster. At what point will this equation break? This is a very important question because while locally and for any sort of normal human throwing oranges, this approximation will hold. If you're really good at it, at some point, it will no longer be true. 
And that is because you're sending it so far away that your range is covering large enough space that you're starting to see the curvature of the non-flat earth. And in other words, it means that if you're really, really, really good at throwing oranges, your orange at some point before it hits the ground, it will actually start to see the curvature of the earth and your range is going to be even larger. And if you're really, really good at it, in principle, you could actually throw it and you saw it, it was so fast, it is now in an orbit around the Earth. And if you can get a velocity so that the orange is essentially compensating for the curvature of the Earth, at that specific moment, you actually have a circular orbit. So let's go back into the contents. Now we just saw this experiment done with this little orange and I actually threw it from a height somewhere around here and it then went down um, if I were to follow it with a trajectory that looks something like this. This has never been done in physics, first time ever with an orange of course. And what we've seen actually is that the, um, the horizontal velocity that I gave it at the start stays fixed. There is nothing affecting the little orange horizontally, but vertically gravity is pushing it down and the vertical velocity that starts from zero actually goes up or down because it becomes negative. And what happens is the orange will have a specific range that is, is defined here. At, at some point, the orange hits the ground as we've seen on the, on the whiteboard. And you can very easily demonstrate that if you write down the equation of, of motion that you can see here from the orange, you start at a, a original position, S0, with an initial velocity that is in the vertical component. We're gonna set it to zero, but in general, this is how you'd write it. And again, this is just to recap things you've covered in 101 and 102, and gravity is the only force affecting that is going to be changing the, the velocity. And as we've seen on the, on the whiteboard, if the initial velocity is zero, and if we're trying to solve for the moment at which the orange hits the ground, we can very easily find that. And the answer turns out to be just square root two times the initial height divided by G. And with that time, if we multiply by the original velocity, then we can very easily calculate the range. And what we already saw on the whiteboard is that this will only be valid actually if the earth is really flat. This is a good approximation when we're talking about small ranges, but once the range starts to be a significant fraction of the earth's circumference, you will start to see the curvature of the earth. And essentially what we're trying to discuss is that if we go back to our projectile example, if the range is very small, we never see the curvature of the earth and those very simple assumptions work. But as soon as you start being really good at throwing oranges or more like it, rockets, you start to see the curvature of the earth and actually the range that you achieve will be larger than with a simple approximation. And that is essentially demonstrated here and apart from hitting this x-axis, your orange or anything else will actually go further. And if you start sending things at even larger speeds, they become something uh, like you can see here. And this is essentially Newton's Cannon experiment. And for different orbits, the first orbit we did by sending an orange was just orbit A that you can see right there. And if we start getting better and better at it, and you can even get C if you send it at a velocity where essentially the rate is exactly the same as the rate of curvature of the Earth. Anything else, you start getting an elliptical orbit like in D, or if you're really, really good at it, and if you really want to escape the Earth's gravity, you can even get orbits like uh, those here, E.